Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how we can control the HTTP methods that are allowed uh, for a client to use when making a request to an HTTP web server configured on the ASP32 running the Arduino core. As target board, I'm going to use a FireBeetle ASP32 board from DFRobot. So, moving on to the code, this initial part will be what we have been covering before. We need to do the library includes, we need to define the credentials of the Wi-Fi network and we need an object of class, a sync web server, so we can later configure uh, the routes of our web server. If you look into the setup function, this initial part is also the same from the previous tutorials using this HTTP web server framework and we basically uh, open the serial connection, um, connect the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network and at the end we print the local IP assigned to the SP32 so you can later reach it uh, from a client. Now, uh, from what we have also been covering in the previous videos, uh, basically, when we want to configure a route, we just need to call this on method on our server object, and this on method receives three parameters. The first one is the name of the route. The second one is a parameter that will uh, specify the, H the HTTP method that will be allowed on this route. And the third is the handling function that will be triggered when a request is made to this route, assuming that, this, that the client uses the correct HTTP method. So, we are going to focus on this second parameter and we have already used it in the previous tutorials where we had very simple use cases where um, some web browser wanted to do a request to the, to the server uh, so it was just fetching some content and it would be using the HTTP uh, GET method. Basically, this parameter uh, is, uh, needs to be a value from an enum defined by the framework and that enum uh, each value of that enum corresponds to a HTTP method and if we pass that value to this second parameter it means basically that that HTTP method will be allowed on this route oh sorry on this route here so basically in our case we are saying okay in this route that happens to be called slash method but it could be called wherever we wanted we only will allow HTTP get requests so this was a very simple use case, but of course that in other uh, application scenarios the client may, may need to make an HTTP POST request, for example to send some data to the server to create a resource or any other uh, use case that makes use of a POST request. So in that case, uh, we can use the HTTP underscore POST enumerated value from the enum I've, I've been talking about, and this means that in this route um, I will only be allowing HTTP POST requests. What happens and what uh, the framework should do is if, for example, on this route here I send an HTTP GET request, it should uh, simply ignore that request, uh, don't trigger this uh, handling function and it should return to the server some information indicating that something went wrong and of course that the request could not be handled. So. Um, Below, I'm showing you another route uh, which makes use of another uh, HTTP method. Uh, note that there are multiple methods defined in the HTTP uh, protocol specification. Put is uh, another one of them that uh, we can also need for some use cases. There's of course others such as a delete, for example, when we want to delete a resource, uh, resource from the server. And um, uh, I think most of them are covered in the in the, this enumerated value. Uh, I'm going to leave um, in the description of this video uh, the URL to the um, that shows the, all the values that this enum can can contain. So in case you want to use uh, other HTTP methods, you can check there the corresponding enumerated values. So to finish the configuration of the server, I just wanted to show you uh, another um, enumerated value that it doesn't correspond to. Uh, any HTTP method. This any uh, is not uh, a method of the HTTP protocol specification. It's rather a value defined by, by um, this framework that allows us to say that in this route I want to, to allow uh, any type of HTTP methods. I don't care if it is a put, a post, a get, whatever the client uh, sends me, whatever the um, 
uh, the HTTP method the client uses, I'm going to handle it and I'm going to execute this handling function um, and everything should uh, work fine. So keep in mind that if some use case needs to make use of it, um, there's this, uh, there is this possibility, okay? So, to finish, uh, to finish our server configuration, uh, we just need to call this begin method. Uh, so the server starts listening to the HTTP requests. Um, basically, the, the server starts operating. So, uh, after that, you need to upload the code to ARSP32. Uh, I've already done so using the correct credentials from my Wi-Fi wi network. Uh, don't forget to change uh, the constants at the beginning of the code uh, by your Wi-Fi network credentials. So, uh, in order to test our code, I'm going to use the a tool called Postman. Uh, Postman is a free application that allows us to make HTTP uh, requests and it allows us to specify, for example, uh, the HTTP methods, uh, the body, uh, some headers, uh, we can also check what is returned by the server in detail. So it's a very, very powerful tool for developers to test APIs, to test servers, etc. I use it a lot in my daily job and I really recommend you to take a look at it. I'm going to leave the link to download it uh, in the description. And this is a free tool so you can download it and test it uh, and use it uh, without any problem. So I've already, um, if you are not uh, yet used to this interface, if you have no prior um, knowledge of Postman, but basically uh, I've already configured here um, the, four, the four requests that I'm going to test, the four routes that I'm going to test. Um, basically I can configure them beforehand and do the, the requests later. So as you can see here, I've already uh, I've already put here the the, um, the IP address of my SP32, and then the route that I am going to reach uh, in my test. So, and on this big uh, drop down in the left, uh, we can specify uh, the HTTP method that we want to use uh, when contacting this endpoint. So notice that. I'm on the get route, which means that from what we have configured in our code, that this route should only listen to HTTP get requests. So what I'm going to do first is going here and put here a post. So uh, when I do a request to this get route using a post method, the framework should not accept it, should ignore it and return back to me um, the information that something went wrong. Okay? so. As you can see, after clicking this send method, there was no payload response. Here is where the, the payload response is, is shown. But as you can see here, there was a server internal uh, error. Let me just say something about this HTTP code. Personally, I don't think it's the, the most appropriate one because this is a very generic error stating that something went wrong in the internal, sorry, in the server. But in fact, uh, there was nothing wrong uh, with the server, there was no, no internal error. Uh, the fact was that the client did not use the correct uh, method and actually there is a specific HTTP code to specify this, that that method is not allowed in that route. So uh, personally I, I do not agree much with this uh, five, uh, 500 status code being returned when the method is wrong, uh, but it, it is what the framework returns. So basically, now if I go here and change it to a GET request, and if I send my requests, sorry, I did not, I did not click it. Okay, it's sending, and as you can see here, I get the answer uh, that we have defined in the code. So it means that the handling function in this case has uh, executed, and as you can see here, uh, there is an OK code being returned to the client, so the client knows everything was uh, OK. Just to show you other other examples, for instance, for the the put the put uh, route that on should only listen to put requests. If I send a post, again the same internal server error, no payload uh, response. Also, if I try a get request, same internal server error. And if now I go to the put and send a request, okay, everything uh, works fine, and it returns to me the the expected response. Just for completion, as you can see here, the post the post route. If I make a GET request to this route, uh, I get an internal server error. 
If I use the correct post method, the one that the server is expecting, we, re we, we receive as output uh, the message returned by the handling function. So to finish our example, uh, as I've uh, said before, uh, there's, there's the possibility of configuring a route that allows any kind of, uh, of HTTP method. Of course, that this is not an HTTP method, it's, it's just a functionality from the framework. Uh, there is no way any HTTP method. Uh, but basically, uh, as, I, as, as we have seen, this route should listen to any kind of requests. So for instance, if I go here and I send a GET request, OK, I receive an OK code and I receive the payload of the response. If I send here a delete, one that we didn't even use in our code, OK, everything is OK. Uh, here's the OK response. If I go to the post, same behavior. If I go to the put, OK, same behavior. So as you can see, uh, this is a very useful feature. Um, because we want our, our web server to be as robust as possible and of course that we cannot uh, trust that the client will be well behaved we cannot ensure that every client that will try to access our web server will be careful and use only the methods that are allowed uh, or that are, were supposed to be used on that route so we can really uh, specify that okay on this route I just allow this method and if the client doesn't behave well um, we will simply ignore the request and return an error message to that client so he fixes his, his request and uses the appropriate method. Uh, hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching.